<laughs> Club life in Lennox is modest and unassuming. The Lennox Clubhouse is a quiet little dwelling near the post office, neither large, imposing, nor much frequented on ordinary occasions. Indeed, all places of public resort in Lennox are of little account in appearance. The post office is tiny. The railway station is not only very small, but ridiculously shabby. The people who use it doubtless prefer it so. They could easily, um, they could easily cause it to be changed if they wished. <laughs> okay, just like that. The boat um, the boat club house on the lake is a trifle smarter, but by no means large. Canoeing, rowing, and sailing are practiced, and though the lake is but a mile long, there is to be a regatta during the month to the Stokes Cup. Of course, the boat club is called the Lake Mackinac. This is hardly fair to the old name of the Stockbridge Bowl, which really gave the region its <clears throat> vogue and deserves better treatment, which really gave the region. Mr. William D. Curtis, who has been in Lenox since 1853, says that even at that date, a few smart people had begun coming to Lennox and the Berkshire Hills attracted uh, doubtless by what had been written of the life there of people like Holmes, Bryant, Longfellow, Mrs. Sigourney, Mrs. Martineau, Fanny Kemble, Mrs. Sedgwick Hawthorne, Fanny Perdue, N.P. Willis, G.W. Curtis, David Dudley Field, Herman Melville, P.R. James Fields, Dewey. Oh, my goodness. These go on and on and on. What a um, literary society. And it goes on to end. Brooks, Winthrop, Emerson, Sargent, Lowell, Thoreau. Really, the list is long enough to establish for the Stockbridge Bowl, which was what all these people called it a fame something like that of the English Lake District. And a pretty name it is, and well it describes the rounded contour of the lake and the way in which it nestles deep down among the green hills. One doesn't bear much in Lennox of married women golfing, or one doesn't hear much in Lennox of married women golfing, or rowing, or tramping, or cycling, though the daughters of the rich have taken it to the wheel with enthusiasm, riding in tanned leggings with ankle-high skirts, never in bloomers. The passion of the women of maturer years at the moment is for collecting colonial furniture, and old knick-knack uh, for the furnishing of their stately homes, which are usually in the colonial style. All Western Massachusetts is rich in colonial examples, being a long-settled, prosperous, and little-changing community. I should say that Edward Jennings has as fine a collection of colonial wares as anywhere in the country. Cornelius Vanderbilt and President Cleveland have taken 3000 worth each of colonial furniture out of Berkshire County for Newport and Gray Gables, Mr. Anson Phelps, etc. Pause. 